The Mike Trevisano Show. Discreet and professional. News Radio WTAM 1100. You know, I usually don't start the show this way, but uh, I got a question to ask. Listen very closely now. Nominees for the class of 2010 at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland have been announced. The Rock Hall's Howard Kramer runs down the list. The group on the ballot for 2010 is LL Cool J, the Stooges, the Chantelles, the Hollies, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Genesis, Kiss, Abba, Laura Nero, Darlene Love, Donna Summer, and Jimmy Cliff. 500 voters from... Are they starting to stretch, uh, scrape the bottom of the barrel there for inductees to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You don't like LL Cool J? I'm not saying I like any of them or dislike any of them. I want you to listen one more time to the inductees. Tell me if they're... I mean, I'm just asking you out there. Are they starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel here? Take a listen. Nominees for the class of 2010 at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland have been announced. The Rock Hall's Howard Kramer runs down the list. The group on the ballot for 2010 is LL Cool J, the Stooges, the Chantel, the Hollies, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Genesis, Kiss, Abba, Laura Nero, Darlene Love, Donna Summer, and Jimmy Cliff. 500. Now, there's some good ones in there, but there's some, oh, my God, in the Rock and Roll Hall. All right, and the other question I want to ask you, okay, there's three county commissioners. I want you to listen. To, thank you for stopping that music, by the way. It gave me a headache. Yeah, he's not going to get a vote from you, though. Wow. <laughs> uh, there's three county commissioners. Two of them want Russo to step down. Take a listen here. Two of the Cuyahoga County commissioners say Russo should resign. Cuyahoga County Treasurer Jim Rokaka. What two county commissioners do you think that is? Our phone numbers are 216-578-1100 or 216-578-1111. I need, a, I need your help today. It's tough. <clears throat> the Stooges. Yeah, Larry Curley and Moe. They were. Do you not hear them say? Don't forget Shep. Who are the Stooges? I'm being dead serious. I don't know. They're a rock band out of New York, late '70s, punk. Are they're, uh, they're punk? Okay. Yeah, they they all died before they can get really popular. So the the Stooges. Yes, the Stooges. Yes. All of them. Look, no one's calling in to, to help me out here. I you, you, you call in to be selfish when you need want to win something or you want to vent or you want to get your opinion out there. But when I ask for help, okay, you don't call. I mean, I think that's a little selfish as the audience, uh, you know, as, as, as a participant of this show. I asked two questions. What two county commissioners are they talking about that want Russo to step down, in your opinion? And do you think the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is scraping the bottom of the barrel for inductees? The Stooges. Maybe those are the two commissioners. Oh, so now you're going to call, huh? Uh, Greg, you're in the air on WTAM 1100. Hey, how you doing, Mike? Uh, Jimmy Page. Now, that's not scraping the bottom of the barrel. Well, I'm not saying all of them. There's, I said there's some good ones in there. I'm asking you, are they? don't tell me, you know, Kiss. And, you know, there's some good ones in there. All right, I just thought you didn't like any of the... Uh, no, it's nominees. not that I don't like any of them. I'm asking, are they starting to scrape... You heard the names. Are they starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel? Uh, with a few of them. You know, that's, my, that's what I asked. That's what I asked. Don't be afraid to give an opinion here. Come on. Yo, man, that won't take a stand to fall for anything. Uh, Chris, you're in the air. Hey, Triv. It's a joke, man. It should be called the, the Rap Hall of Fame. I mean, this is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What are they doing? What do you mean? I mean, LL, LL Cool J in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, they're just picking. I mean, I understand maybe he's good to some people, but it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, So I you're saying rap music isn't rock and roll? Exactly. I it, mean, it's rap music. Should, exactly. Why should he be inducted? It's yeah. a joke. Well, are there country music artists in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I think there are a couple, but it's... Well, is country, music rock and, is country music rock and roll? I would say no. Well, but there... So so then you just want to put... So you just got to... First of all, you got to come up with the definition of who's rock and roll and who isn't then. And what about a guy like Donny Osmond? He's a little bit rock and roll. He's a little bit country. <laughs> then what do you do? Right. What, do you do with a guy, what do you do with a guy like Donny Osmond? I mean, they inducted Madonna last year. Right. And I don't think that was... The right decision. I mean, it's just become a joke anymore. Anyone who's had yeah. have been out for 20 years right. is eligible to be inducted. Yes. All right. All right. Well, I'll tell you who gets inducted. Somebody who's able to help sell tickets to the induction ceremony. 
sort of like the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. If you can say, sell a table or two, ha, they'll induct you to the rock, to the Broadcasting Hall of Fame. They got some people in the Broadcasting Hall. No, nah, well, let me get started here. Uh, Jeff, you're in the air on WTIM 1100. Yeah, the, uh, my guess for the two commissioners that want Frank Russo to resign is um, Peter Lawson Jones and Tim Hagen. You think? I think. All right, because I'm... I think because I believe tomorrow is Frank Russo's little partner in crime. Hey, now nah, watch your mouth. Accusation. Uh, yes. WTIM 1100, you're in the air. Yeah, Jones and Hagen. Jones and Hagen what? The county commissioners, the ones that wanted uh, to have Russo step down. What, what about Jones and Hagen? What do you mean, what about them, man? They, they, you know, they, they don't want Russo in there. Why not? DeMar does. Come on, DeMar's in his back pocket. Come on. In whose back pocket? In, in Russo, uh, Russo's pocket, man. You know what a big back pocket you'd have to have? <laughs> you know what kind of money we're talking? Yes. No. <laughs> Uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Yeah, hello. Uh, the Stooges were Iggy Pop's band. Really? And I believe they were out of Michigan. Do you think they should be in the rock, uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, yeah, Iggy Pop should, yeah, and they, Stooges. Okay. Well, thank you for the phone call. Uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Hey, Trill, that guy's crazy. The Stooges are Larry, Curly, and Moe. That's the Stooges I know. That's right. Yes. That's it. That's it? Yep. All right. Thank you very much for the phone call. Uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Hello, Mike. Yes. Uh, a little tidbit about the Stooges. The gentleman was right that it was Iggy Pop, and the reason why they bring them up is for some reason the induction uh, people every year try to put groups that are influential to, um, like, a, a group of music. They're more of the punk alternative. And uh, even though their music was actually pretty bad, they were like the first to really break out with the sound and the style that that they had and influenced actually a lot of people. So should they be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Now, I've always felt personally that, like you said, they need to determine that there's subgenres of rock and roll, metal, hard rock, you know, light rock. Look it up. Do we have country people inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, yeah, I'm looking I, at the li- Well, you can interpret them as being country. Yeah. I mean, Brenda Lee, is that considered uh, yeah, country? Yeah, probably put somebody like Johnny Cash or somebody I mean, in there. Jackson to- Brown. Jackson Brown. That goes both ways. Jackson Brown was an offensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> now, the question that I do have is why it takes them so long to put somebody like the Hollies Give in. Give me a Brenda Lee song. Okay, you got yes, it. Uh, uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Hey, Trev. Um, um, regarding that guy that called a little while ago about, you know, why is LL Cool J eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when it's not rock and roll? Well... I mean, you kind of have to take, I mean, they really don't mean rock and roll literally. I mean, they had to name. He's got to be in there. He's got to be in there. Yeah. Huh? Uh, let's see. Got to be somebody in there that's country, strictly oh, country. Well, I mean, they list the band. The band is, like, right, like I said, right in the middle there where it could be both. What band? No, the band called the band. The band called 1100. Yeah, hi, Mike. Hey, uh, uh, a really good song for the band is Chestnut Mare. That's hilarious. But what I caught about is if you could play a snippet from Easy um, <laughs> uh, Iggy Pop and the Stooges, because I can't recall any of their uh, music, and then maybe we can judge if it's oh, rock and roll or okay, not. Okay, let's let's get here. Here we're playing the Stooges right now for you. Right, I got Iggy. I don't know if it's the Stooges, but here, we'll find here, out. Here's his stomachache. That's that's rock and roll. Yeah, that's rock and roll with some. Um, uh, with some, heavy, heavy metal influence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but I, I would, I would, yeah, I would agree with you. I would consider the Stooges rock and roll. My question is, should the Stooges be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't know. That's not up to me to decide. I, I don't know, Mike. I mean, you want to put Babe Ruth in the Hall of Fame, and you want to put Omar Vizquel in the Hall of Fame, right? Does that make any sense? Um, I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm just. That's why I'm. That's all I'm trying to figure out here today. Uh, TJ, you're in the air on WTAM eleven hundred. Yeah, hi, Mike. Hey, you know, Mike, this Rock and Roll Hall, this is a real political organization. You know, you had groups like Steppenwolf and the Moody Blues that should have been put in this place 20 years ago, and they've still been bypassed. Uh, and I know you're going to remember, a lot of your younger listeners aren't going to, but Pat Boone, 
Pat Boone was one of the major hits in America in his time. He even started a fad with the white buck shoes. They won't even touch him because he's not politically correct enough to put in the hall. Some of these people they put in there is just unbelievable. What? And there's some outstanding bands that are being left out. Wait, and, and excuse my ignorance here, but uh, what, what, what is, why isn't Pat Boone politically correct? Well, because he's real Christian and everything, and that's kind of against what the Rock and Roll Hall stands for. Hey, hey, let's face it, Mike. Remember when Glenn Beck was doing a rally for the troops a few years ago and they were going to use the Rock Hall? And then at the last minute they decided, nope, we're not going to let you people here. So you tell me that wasn't, you know, uh, political with that. Yeah. But, I mean, or you look at stuff. I, I think they didn't want Glenn Beck to cry into the microphones and rust them. I think that's why they changed <laughs> it. I think that's the only reason. But, you know, but anyway, go ahead, TJ. Yeah. But, but, you know, I mean, they're like the Moody Blues. I mean, these people had so many great hits and stuff. Uh, they're not in there. Uh, that one caller you had before was absolutely right. The Hollies were a fantastic group with many hits. Uh, now they're finally coming up, and they may not get in or may not get, you know, uh, or get out. But they should have been in a long time ago. How about the Stooges? I never heard of them. I mean, I, I never heard of half these people. Or like this rap junk. This ain't rock and roll. Well, yeah, but they got country music in there, so. Well, I mean, you know, country, you can say rock has its roots in country. You know, for, for you can make a little. Well, there's that. people that say that rock has its roots in rap. Well, yeah, what people say. I that. mean, rap music makes me throw up, but I, you know, so I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm, I'm being obje- I'm being, you know, I'm being kind of objective here with you, TJ. No, you know, no, I'm saying, but you know what I'm saying, Mike. You look at like the talent, okay? You know, you look at these groups with talented musicians and stuff. Hey, let's face it, Mike. You and I could be rap stars. I'm a white man, and I take no crap when I do my white man's rap. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 We'll do it together. Start all over. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Go. I'm a white man and I take no crap. When I do my white man's rap, I got two kids in a house in the birds, tree line lawns and painted curves, because I'm white. Now, I white drinks martinis by my pool. My kids all go to private school, because I'm white. See, it's okay. Like it. We could be a hit. We yo, could be yo, in the rock yo. and roll all next year this time. Check it out. Oh, wait, I forgot. Bitches and hoes and hoes and bitches and bitches and hoes and hoes and bitches. The Mike Trivisano Show. Melts in your head, not in your hand. WTAM 1100. You might have noticed the fall season begun a little different this year. Even squirrels are trying to distance themselves from acorn. Have you noticed that? <laughs> you probably heard this on the news today. There are new security alerts issued to law enforcement agencies all across the country because Al-Qaeda is playing to attack Vital economic centers. Well, good luck trying to find one of those. <laughs> ah, yeah. Hey, more problems for Democratic sleazeball John Edwards. Uh, the campaign official who claimed he fathered the child of Edwards' mistress uh, is writing a book where he says Edwards is the real father. So, looks like USC wasn't the only one playing with bad Trojans. Apparently. <laughs> well, according to the Los Angeles Times, the immigrant population in California actually declined last year. When asked if they had noticed, 80% of the people in California said, see. <laughs> so, apparently, it has, it has dropped. He's getting better, ain't he? Yeah, this yesterday was real good. Yeah. It's been kind of weak, to be honest with you, since he came back. But. Yeah, he's getting better. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people, but some people pay for information. Yeah. I would pay for one bit of information. I don't know why I was, you know, just fooling around on the Internet last night and come across a couple stories on Hillary Clinton. You know, with everything going on at the U.N. Oh, my God, I hope Obama gets eight years. <laughs> I, I pray he gets eight years. I really do. I want him to punish everybody that voted for him. I really want this guy to get eight years. What he's going to do to this country in eight years will be magnificent. He's the he president will, of the world now. He'll, he'll destroy the country. I oh, Please let him get eight years, Lord. But anyway, you know how people pay for information? Yes. There's a bit of information I would pay for. I'd pay up to $1,000 for this. What's the information? I don't know why. But I would love to know the last time that Bill and Hillary slept together. Ooh, I, can... I would pay up to $1,000 for that type of information. I have that information. Yes. You'll pay for it? <laughs> when Chelsea was nine, nine months, months before, before Chelsea, Chelsea was, was born, born was right, the last yes, time they right. slept together. Yeah, bada bing. Right. Where's my money? I don't know. Wouldn't you love to know that? I mean, that could be the most hypocritical family ever, ever, ever on planet Earth. And people vote for both of them. Oh, they love him, especially yeah. Bill. People love Bill. 
They can't stand each other. They don't sleep with each other. He was on. Uh, he, he cheats on her like crazy, and people go, oh, "Boy, oh, so the Clintons are the greatest people in the world." I want them to lead our country. I love the Clintons. But I bet they file their taxes jointly to save money. I'll bet they do more jointly. <laughs> but there's a few jointlies in that couple somewhere. <laughs> Bill Clinton. He was on Letterman last. Week. You should have heard Letterman kissing his ass. It was disgusting. I heard Letterman and LeBron uh, were on after Bill Clinton was on. They were on together, right? No, I didn't see them together. See, see. What's See, that? that rumor still lives then, because they say Clinton and LeBron are the same. I've I've heard that. I've heard this because uh, I didn't yes. see them together on the stage at the same time. See, <laughs> well, we'll have to figure that out. We'll yes. ask Dan Gilbert when he comes in tomorrow. Well, yeah, we'll have Dan Gilbert in the five o'clock tomorrow. We'll ask him, right? <laughs> uh, Ackman, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Mike, how you doing? How you doing? When do you think the last time that Bill and Hillary slept together, Ackman? I don't know, Mike. I know. I'd pay for that information. I don't know why, Bachman. I'd pay for it, though. The last time? Uh, yeah, the last time. I la- think they slept together was like, what, 10 years ago? Well, probably. You're probably pretty close there, Ackman. You're pretty close. Hey, how about this baseball season? I'll bet you're enjoying it, huh? Mike, Ackman? sorry about yesterday. I couldn't call. What's that, Ackman? Hello. You okay? Hackman. Baseball, oh my, they're giving me a headache. Yeah, the baseball's giving me, uh, giving, it's giving me a headache, too. Yes. I know. Really, um, Football's giving me a headache, too, Hackman. on my nerves. Yeah, everything's getting on my nerves. <laughs> how you feeling? I don't know how I support them, Mike. I don't know. Um, yes. Giving me a headache. How you feeling? I can't wait till they um right. Oh, uh, st- stop playing. You feeling okay? Hey, Trev. Yeah. Don't listen to that radio. You're getting is all confused. Out there? He's not. He's not paying. Don't listen, Ackman. Don't listen to the radio. I, I'm gonna can't hear you. Yeah, I know because you're listening to the radio. I don't know what to thank you. Well, I don't know what to. I I, I gotta go, Ackman. Thank you. I feel so sorry for him. I really do. Uh, WTIM eleven hundred. You're in the air. Hey, Trev. Hey, how you doing? Uh, some of the crossover guys. The Conway Twitty's in there, and he was a rock and roller before he went back over the country. Yeah, so they've, got, yeah. they've got a lot of them in there. Right. I mean, well, I mean, we we were talking earlier about is it uh, it's what is rock and roll? You know. Yeah, I mean. It, I mean, is rap music rock and roll? Is country rock and roll? I don't think it is, but I think that guy's right when it said should, it should be the music hall of fame. Yeah, that was or me that pop, said that, but yeah, smart popular, guy. There you go, popular music hall of fame. Let's yes. put it that way. Well, I ran down a list of people that are in both the country music hall of fame, mm-hmm. and though and that's in Nashville, and then the rock and roll hall of fame. Okay. Chet Atkins. Who? Yeah, Chet Atkins. I'm I, sure there's somebody I, I, 80 years old who knows who he is. I think I heard of him. Johnny Cash. Johnny Chamblin. Winner. So, I'm take country. I, I this really is don't. a pulled up definition. A genre of popular music originating in the 1950s, a blend of black rhythm and blues with white country and western. Right, it's so, a generic term for the range of styles right, that evolved out of right, rock and tell roll. Tell me where the black is in the Everly Brothers right here, okay? <laughs> Did he find me a song that sounds country with Elvis? All right, let's see what I can do here real quick. Let's see here. I stop. That ain't even close. No, this isn't either. Love me, treat me like a fool. No. No. Country. Well, he's in both rock. Okay, that, that doesn't matter. Uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. We're looking for the black rhythm. And what would you say the definition was? In the Everly Brothers. In, what? In, the, uh, uh, in the Everly Brothers. The black. We're looking for the blend of black rhythm and blues with white country and western. You'd be 110 before you would find black rhythm and blues in any Everly Brothers song. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, sir. I'm that, sorry. Yeah, I don't know about that, but... Uh... I wanted to answer those two questions that you posed at the beginning of the show. What were they? I forgot now. Um, it the two was, commissioners? What two, what two commissioners uh, to, said they wanted fr- 
Frank Russo to step down. Yeah, hold on. Here's the story right here. Hold on real quick. Two of the Cuyahoga County commissioners say Russo should resign. And... Yeah, what two are those? I'm going to go with Jones and Hagen because DeMora, because DeMora thinks that this whole corruption investigation is a conspiracy against Italians. So why would he? So he's not going to go. He's not going to go against a fellow Italian. Well, you know what Demora said, don't you? Uh, what do you say? Here, class, we're going to go right to the hotline because I see a story here. It says that accusations fly in East Cleveland. Yes. Uh, all right. Now you want to answer what other questions I asked? Uh, the, the other question was, are, are we scraping the bottom of the barrel for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And the answer to that is yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, listen to these inductees. Nominees for the class of 2010 at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland have been announced. The Rock Hall's Howard Kramer runs down the list. The group on the ballot for 2010 is LL Cool J, the Stooges, the Chantels, the Hollies, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Genesis, Kiss, ABBA, Laura Nero, Darlene Love, Donna Summer, and Jimmy Cliff. 500. Wow. Wow. You don't like ABBA? Who? ABBA. I love ABBA. <laughs> ABBA C. ABBA. You put a little sauce on ABBA. <laughs> It's tremendous. really is. Can I hear an ABBA song? Sure. You know this one. I guarantee you you know this one. I, I know them all. I'm a music buff. I'm sorry. I yes. forgot about that. Thank you. Uh, I'm still looking right. for the country and Elvis and the black rhythm and blues and the Everly Brothers. <laughs> oh, this is ABBA. You don't have to go any farther. Stop. Okay. Uh, <laughs> WTAM 1100, you're in the air. How you doing, Mike? Wonderful. Hey, Mike. Um, as far as... Uh, do these bands deserve to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or not? Um, everything's a melting pot for, you know, better or worse. And if you're going to use the, the name Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, then I'd say no. But I think uh, most of the people that are inducted into the Hall of Fame are based on popular music. And if you're going to use that definition, then I'd say yes, they do. Because if you look at um, earlier rock and roll, um, it was uh, influenced by old blues and mostly from the South, uh, African-American artists. Yes. And then that gave way to uh, rockabilly and, and country music. And then, like, 70s, you had hard rock, and then through the... Uh, yeah, rock and roll, I, I understand. Rock and roll evolved. I, I understand that. I, I really do. But what, the question that somebody asked today, is country rock and roll, and is rap music rock and roll? If not, how are they in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You go to my website, uh, WTAM.com, keyword Triv. Take a look at uh, Omar Could Wait a minute, hold on with that song. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm talking here. Why are you playing Elvis over the top of my... You, you destroyed my whole train of thought there. Go to my website, WTAM.com, click on the Triv page, and take a look at Gaddafi and tell me if he dyes his hair. Also looks like he had a facelift, doesn't it? It's an ugly dude, ain't it? Oh, you see how black his hair is? <laughs> Jet black. All right, I think we found a song that makes that uh, would. I think we found a song that would qualify Elvis for the country Hall of Fame. I think this sounds country. I here, I stand corrected. Here, Opinion. come on, home runs, hits, RBIs is which gets you into the Hall of Fame. So you're saying offense is more important than defense? Without it, for Hall of Fame, yes. Without we, a doubt. Why do we put pitchers in? It, can you can you name the person that has the most Golden Gloves? Uh, what position? Uh, any position. Brooks Robinson, third base. Yep. I think he has the most of anybody. Though. You think? Okay. Can you can you name who has the most home runs in the history of Major League Baseball? I can't because there's like three guys I'd like to name. I could name Barry Bonds. I could name Hank Aaron. Who has it? I don't know. Is who it, has is the it record? Barry, Barry Bonds. There who you go. Has? See, you can always name those type of records, but defensive records you can't name. Doesn't mean they don't count. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean they're as important. Sure they are. No, they're not. If you can, what's the difference if I hit a home Here. run and add a add a run in game, or if I make a great defensive play and save a run? Let me explain something to you, okay? Here's why offense is always more important than defense. All right. Okay. Think about this for a second. If you don't score a run, can you win the game? No. There you go. If you don't give up a run, can you lose the game? Yes, you can play to a tie. You can't win unless you score. Can't. That's why offense is more important in baseball than defense. You can't lose if you don't give up a run. But you can. You also can't win. Well, it's you, possibly you, possible you won't win the game either. Because if both teams don't give up a run, you play forever. You have to score to win. So what's more important? You could do it on four walks and an inning. You have to score to win. What's more important? 
I would say they're equal. You have to score to win. You have to. If the pitcher hits four batters in a row, the offense Kurt, I'll do make anything. it real easy for you. You have to score to win. Why is home field advantage batting last? And when's the last time you heard of a pitcher hitting four guys in a row to, for the only run of a game? When's the last time you ever heard of a game going forever? I've heard of a lot of games going 27 <laughs> innings, 20 innings, zero to zero, 19 innings, zero to zero, 20, 18, 18 innings, 18 innings, whatever, zero to zero, whatever. When's the last time you heard that? But that doesn't matter. You have to score to win, Curdy. But if you give up a bunch of runs, you're going to lose. Well, of course you are, but you have to score to win. Well, obviously you need one run. There you go. So what's more important? I guess technically, technically I technically I'm offense. right. Yes, go to news. Technically. <laughs> All right, arguing what's more important, offense or defense, right? Yeah. Okay. I would say Omar Vizquel, probably the best defensive player of... of, of Generation, of, at least. Of current times, right? Right, yes. Okay. Albert Pujols. Yeah, he's pretty good defensive first baseman. Probably the finest offensive player in Major League Baseball today. Absolutely. Okay? Yes. Who gets paid more? Uh, Pujols probably about 10 times. Why? Because he hits the long ball. And what is that? home run what is that is that offense or defense that would be bad defense by the pitcher that would is it offense or defense That's that pool holes gets paid for it's offense he gets paid well for. then why does an offensive player get paid way more than the defense if defense is more important because offense puts people in the seats it would be like a producer getting paid more than a talk show host that the producer was more important well, it puts more people in the seats offense. It does it? not put more people in the seats. It's more important to the game, which puts more people in the seats. It's not more important to the game. It is you more, way more important to the game of baseball. To ask the Red Sox in 86 how important defense now, is in the World you, Series if, with Bill Buckner. If you want to. <laughs> and you tell me, oh, it don't matter. But would they, they have gotten there? They scored a lot of runs, when didn't they? But they wouldn't have gotten there if Donnie Moore didn't give up that gopher ball. Ask the Yankees with Reggie Jackson's home runs when they won the World Series what was more important. It's 4.09, and each day this week we're giving away a $50 gift card to Gitgo and $50 gift card to Giant Eagle. Today's name is Rick Hine of Garfield Heights. You have 11 minutes to call, 216-578-1111. Want your chance to win? Sign up at WTAM.com. Hey, I'm Mike Trusano for Mallorca Restaurant located on West 9th Street, and they have the owner, Jesus, on the hotline with us. Jesus, how you doing, buddy? Wonderful, Mike. How are you? What's going on at Mallorca? Well, of course, we have our 24-ounce New Zealand lobster tails. We have our 8-ounce uh, twin lobster for $45, our fresh main lobsters, 2 to 6 pounds, $14 per pound with all the trims and a salad first, broil or steam. Of course, our Chilean sivas, our Vilo Sobuku, our Mahi Mahi, our shellfish casserole with saffron rice, clams, mussels, shrimps, scallops, and lobster, with chicken and sausage with saffron rice, which is the famous paella, and of course, the signature dish, the shrimp and garlic sauce. We do a clam bake a Marbella on this side, uh, Mike. We will do clam bakes in the next couple of months. Wow, yeah, and don't forget, I, I, I presume, too, to start booking your holiday parties, right? Yes, private rooms available, of course. Yeah, it is yeah. uh, up to 100 people. At either location, of course, our Brazilian steakhouse, our Brasa Grill, right next to Mallorca. All you can eat, a set price for $35, as much as you want, for as long as you want. 16 different meats and a wonderful salad bar with about 16 different items on it, from seafood to antipastos to salads, etc., etc., etc. Mallorca on West 9th Street, Brasa on West 9th Street, Marbella on Chagrin Boulevard. Hey, Zeus, I can't believe how fast this year's gone, you know? I know, man. We've gone on 13 years, Mike. It's amazing, ain't it, Jesus? Yeah, let's hand in there and let's see what happens. Thank you, Jesus. Have a wonderful weekend. Mallorca on West 9th Street, a great, 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 great restaurant. All right, somebody called us and said Kentucky Rain is a, is a, is a country song by Elvis Presley. I listened to it. I don't think so. Play it real quick here, some of it anyway. All right. Uh, Rocky, you're in the air on WTAM 1100. Hey, Mike. How you doing, buddy? Good, Rock. What's happening, buddy? Hey, uh, hey, how's Adrian doing? Uh, she's doing real good, Mike. Good, Rock. She's doing good. Yeah, yeah thanks. Hey. Yeah, listen, I got some confidential information. Yeah. Okay, I got next year's rock and roll inductees. I got a list. It's much better, but you can't put this over the air. All right. 
okay? It's Porky Pig with Blue Christmas, Alvin and the Chipmunks, the OSU Marching Band of 1985, the band that sings You Should Be Driving a Kia, yes. the guitar player at East Ninth and Carnegie, right. John the Drummer from the Indians Bleachers, yes. and the shopping cart guy at Mark's in Mayfield Heights. <laughs> Don't forget Wham! with uh, Richard Marks and the other guy. <laughs> I, so, so Rock, I think what you're saying is they're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel, huh? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a bunch of bull crap. All right. Uh, tell Mickey I said hello. Uh, yo, I will, buddy. Thank Take you, Rock. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. How many shows get Rocky to call in, huh? Not a whole lot. Yeah. I don't know any. You all right in there? Yeah, I'm good. You got a head? I've never seen anybody wear their headphones on their neck. Well, I got one on one ear and one on the other. I, yes. I'm multitasking. You got one on one ear and one on your neck. <laughs> uh, Tim, you're in the air on WTAM 1100. Tim? Yes. I'm yes. sorry, Trip. Yeah, no problem, Tim. Uh, first time caller, by the way. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, damn it. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wrong one. Right. Hey, Butler. Yes. Butler. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, you and I disagree sometimes on politics, but on sports, 95% of the time, we agree. Mm -hmm. The best defense is to have a better offense. If I can score more points than you, I'll never freaking lose. Exactly. Exactly. I, I mean, I, yeah, and, and in ba baseball is a, a little bit of a different animal because there's you have offense, you have defense, and you have pitching. And you also have base running, but uh, which can win and lose games for you. But don't get pitching confused with uh, – put it in there with defense because now you're lumping two of the three against offense, okay? Pitching is a se separate category. When do you ever pitch when you're on offense? What do you mean? You don't. You pitch when you're on defense. Yeah, you, no, you, you play defense when you pitch. You don't pitch when, you, when you're on defense. You play, de you play defense when you pitch. So now you're taking the pitchers out of there. No, I'm putting the pitchers in a different category. Pitching – is pitching. It isn't defense. What defense is fielding the ball. And pitching, pitching is, part is of that. pitching. That's why there's a. That's why there's two words there: defense and pitching. Or otherwise, they'd only be called. If they were the same, they'd be. They'd, they'd be all pitching or all defense. So if you had a pitcher who struck out every single batter right. and, they, and they never hit the ball, that's not defense. That's pitching. You didn't you're, need you're, a defense. You're, you're solidifying my point here. See, the farther you go, the deeper you're going to dig your hole here. It's part of the defense. It's not part of the You're defense. You're defending home plate. Pitching is a separate category. Look at the record book. Who cares what the record book says? The because you you categorize the, the parts of baseball. One part is pitching. One part is defense. One part is is uh, offense. Why, other, why do you always want to segregate people? I don't, that's, you always want to put everybody in their little categories and put labels on them. It's I, defense. I grew up in the 60s and 70s <laughs> when segregation was popular. What do you want from me? It's 2009. Pitching is defense. I'm going to go back to the 60s. <laughs> WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Hello. Yes. Mike, what's yes. happening? Wonderful. Hey, who, who, who won the ass contest? Who won the what? The ass contest. The first ass. The first ass. Okay, somebody told me it was the third one. I thought you had a bunch of interior decorators. No. You. Thank you. It was the first ass that won the ass contest. Uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Trev. Yes. Ten time caller. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ray. Thank you. How you doing, buddy? Wonderful. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask your views on uh, what you think about the hip hop Hall of Fame down in Cleveland. The what? The hip hop rap Hall of Fame down in Cleveland. I don't know. Do you think when they do you think when they actually build one, there Leonard Skinner and um, Hank Williams Jr. and maybe Judas Priest will be inducted into it? I'm not. I'm. I'm not understanding where you're going with this. What I'm going is, um, what is uh, MC Hammer and uh, uh, all these rap groups doing getting inducted in the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You'd have they're to. Hip, yeah. they're, they're rap groups. Well, you'd have to call. You know what? Here, write this down, guys. Let's get somebody on from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, a spokesman. They have to have a spokesman, right? right. I, think, I think it's called mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rock. Okay. His or, brother or, Roll. Or we get his brother Roll on. And we'll, and you know what, Ray? We'll ask that quote. We'll get somebody on. Write it down. Give me somebody on this week from the Rock I mean, and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, they're trying to induct LL Cool J. What? 
What is the last rock and roll record LL Cool J come out with? I, I can't answer that for you. So you're saying that rap music is not rock and roll and it shouldn't be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, what do you think? I, you're asking my opinion? Yeah, I, is, I, it, I, is I, it rock and roll? No, it's not rock and roll. I, it's, is, it's this has nothing band. to do with white or black because one of my best friends is uh, is uh, uh, um, 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 black? Asian? Uh, no. A is, rapper? Is bad, uh, I can't, how come I can't think of his name now? <laughs> A great friend. No, it has nothing to do with white <laughs> What's the white rapper's right. name? Eminem. Eminem. One of my best friends is Eminem. So this has nothing to do with white or black. Rap music makes me vomit. Uh, me too. Yes. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, uh, Lenny Kravitz is a rock. He's a black rock and roller. It's got nothing, to do, nothing right. to do with white or black. I start to itch when I hear country music. I throw up when I hear rock. Uh, when I hear rap music. I hear I, I do, too. Yes. Uh, well, why don't we call the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame right I'm now? I'm getting See, numbers right now. Yeah, get a spokesman. I will ask him that question. Every I got a whole bank of phone lines that, that want to know why rap is considered rock and roll. I don't know. We'll have to ask them. Let them answer it. Uh, Scott, you're in the air. Yeah, Mike. It's hey. probably a question you'll never get answered from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame people. Yeah, well, Scott. Just, don't you think that any candidate for the Hall of Fame should at least involve music? Scott, I try not to think. But the thing is, rap is not music. Try and hum one. Try and sing one. It's poetry. There is no melody. There is no harmony. There is no music. Wait a minute. Hold on a second here. I think I got some rap right here. Hold on. Want some Tell me what that means. What? Acutions. No. no uh, it, that it, that it, that it. Here. Wait. Fire paramedic 33. What is your address? Now that ain't it either here. Uh, oh, uh, woo. listen, hey, wah, 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 wah. Well, would that be rap music? All four notes of it. Yes. I don't know. So put a rap song on for me. Is there a famous, like, rap song? Yeah, let me start another one, because they have certain ones in our system, and don't ask me why, but they have unedited versions and edited ones, and I realized I just clicked on the unedited one, and you don't want that. Trust me. <laughs> All right, we have the explanation from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for all you people out there that say rap music is not rock and roll. Here's what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame says. Hip-hop is all part of the whole continuum. It does not exist entirely on its own. It didn't form out of a vacuum. Hip-hop came from a lot of the very same things that developed rock and roll. You know, we look at it under the very big umbrella and don't separate it. Well, we all talked. Does that fall under the same umbrella? Wait a minute. Let me hear that explanation one more time. Hip-hop is all part of the whole continuum. It does not exist entirely on its own. It didn't form out of a vacuum. Hip-hop came from a lot of the very same things that developed rock and roll. You know, we look at it under the very big umbrella and don't separate it. See, that's why I have very few guests on. What a lame explanation <laughs> that is. Seriously. I mean, what a lame explanation that is. Uh, Bob, you're in the air. Yeah, I'd like to take that guy's umbrella and smack him upside the head with it. Yeah, what? I mean, that isn't even an explanation. I don't even know what the hell the guy said there. What the, do you... the Rock and Roll Hall of Shame, Mike. Yeah. This is getting silly. They need to change the name of that. Yeah. Um, but I did find the uh, list that you guys came up with, uh, with, people that are in the Rock Hall and the Country Hall, interesting. Yeah. And there was one name that I didn't hear. I wonder if he's in uh, either. Neil Young. Yes. Just, just a question. He is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Is he, he, he belongs in the Country Hall of Fame, too. Take a song like um, Old Man and compare that to Cinnamon Girl. you got definite country, you got definite rock and roll. Well, Chet Atkins, Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Hank Williams, Brenda Lee, and the Everly Brothers are both in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Country Music Hall of Fame. Well, Chet Atkins, I can see, because he's, he's a guitar genius. He influenced a lot of people. Elvis as well. And Johnny Cash, too, influenced an awful lot of people over the years. Yeah, I would agree with Johnny Cash, definitely. Uh, Elvis, I'm still trying to figure out what is country about Elvis. Well, I think, you know, like you said before, you'd have to go digging into his earlier, more gospel-related stuff, and I think you will find country roots, Mike. Yeah. How'd you like the explanation from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame guy on rap music? Stupid. <laughs> get, get it ready. We'll play going in the news one more time. I'll hear that explanation. Ken, you're in the air. Hey, Trev. Ken, first-time caller. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hey, Butler. A men's show. All right. Uh, might be able to put an end to this uh, baseball debate. If you go three for ten at the plate, where might you be? Hall of Fame one day, right? Well, a 300 hitter would make you a superstar. You go three for ten in the field, where are you going to be? You're going to be driving a Pepsi truck. 
That's it. Beautiful. Simple uh, as that. Guys, uh, man's a genius. I, uh, now what, Curdy? Now what do you want to say? Uh, that man's absolutely 100% right. What, what, but, but he's trying to tell you what's harder. Yeah, playing. The f- yeah, but playing. No, I looked, at, I, looked at, I looked at it exactly the other way. You go three for ten, all right. You're in the Hall of Fame. You make three errors every yeah. ten of chances. If you're you out of it, if you can't do your job in the field ninety at least ninety five to ninety seven percent of the time, you're riding the pine. Ken, explain the explain to the poor kid. It's okay, the degree of difficulty hitting a baseball is the hardest thing in sports. What I, I mean, there isn't anything. You know, I used to argue this with Pete Franklin years ago. And, and Pete said to me, he said, and we'd go back and forth on this, and Pete agreed that hitting a baseball is the most difficult thing to do in all of sports. But you know what the second most difficult thing to do is, they say? What's that? Think about it for a minute. What is the second most difficult thing to do in all of sports? What? Golf ball? No. A goalie in hockey. Yeah. I mean, that it takes some unbelievable talent also. But hitting a baseball, it ain't even close. You know, they talk about being a cornerback in football. What a difficult – or a quarterback in football. Basketball, there is no anything that's difficult. You know, you're a big monster and you just stand by – you know. I mean, you know, but baseball, hitting a baseball, round ball with a round bat. Then once you hit it, nine guys are trying to catch it. And a superstar – fail 70% of the time. Does that tell you all you need to know about how tough it is to hit a baseball? Yeah. All right, listen to the rock and roll. Uh, who is this? This is Howard Kramer. Howard Kramer from the uh, No Relation to the Comedian Kramer. This is Howard Kramer, even I though the not. explanation <laughs> sounds a little bit uh, like a like Jay Leno's routine at night, okay? He's the curatorial director. Of course he is. He cures everything at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Here's his explanation for all you people out there that say, Rap music is not rock and roll. Here's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Who? Howard Kramer. Howard Kramer. Hip-hop is all part of the whole continuum. It does not exist entirely on its own. It didn't form out of a vacuum. Hip-hop came from a lot of the very same things that developed rock and roll. You know, We look at it under the very big umbrella and don't separate it. Huh? The Mike Trivisano Show. Full service encounters. No rip-offs. WTAM 1100. All right, uh, John, if you're on the phone lines, hang on. We'll get right to you. But uh, there's a gentleman on our phone lines named uh, Chris Jerry. He's the father of Emily Jerry. I'm not sure if you, you everybody remembers this story, but uh, I've been promising to have Chris Jerry on for quite a long time now and, uh, because of circumstances, you know, different things that have happened in, uh, with the show and my life and stuff like that. We've, we haven't made connections with Chris Jerry, but uh, he's the father of uh, Emily Jerry, a two-year-old who was uh, – Given a wrong mixture, I don't know if you remember this story, of chemotherapy. She was two years old fighting cancer. And she was given, uh, and, I, and I'll let Chris explain the whole thing to you, because he's starting, uh, um, he, he wants to get this law, law passed. Uh, and he, he's starting the uh, Emily Jerry Foundation to protect children from these simple medical errors. And I've been promising to have Chris on for a long, long time. And uh, let's welcome Chris Jerry to the show. Chris, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, uh, Trev. Uh, thank you very much um, for uh, having me on your show. Um, I wanted um, to um, thank you very much. Um, I, I have heard, you know, on your show um, all the wonderful work you're doing with the Coach for Kids uh, program and uh, those types of things, and uh, with my foundation, you know, I can only hope to emulate all the great things you've been doing uh, in the community and for children uh, in general. Um, it's my true feeling that, um, you know, every child that's born into this world, um, I don't care what race they are, uh, they're all miracles, and they all de- deserve to be treated as such. And um, no child, no person should be put at risk. Let's ex- uh, let's explain to the audience, uh, Chris. Uh, your, your your daughter was two years old, Emily Jerry. Yeah. Uh, she was battling cancer, going through chemotherapy. Explain. Uh, tell everybody what happened. Well, uh, Emily uh, was a, a beautiful, happy uh, little girl, and uh, she's my guardian angel now. Mm-hmm and uh, watching over everything I'm doing, and she's the reason I'm doing everything I'm doing. 
uh, but a very happy child. Um, never complained really about much of anything. And uh, just always laughing and giggling, so on and so forth. I had uh, noticed um, at about uh, the year and a half mark uh, that um, she'd be playing with her brother and sister and what have you, and and she'd stop and wince in pain and grab her side. And uh, at nighttime, for example, uh, she'd wake up and scream out in pain. And uh, my whole career was spent in uh, medical imaging, uh, doing international business development, working with uh, companies like Siemens Medical Systems uh, over in Erlangen, Germany, uh, Philips Medical Systems in the Netherlands, so on and so forth. And um, I, you know, I'm not a licensed physician, but I have uh, seen quite a few films. And I just, I, I was concerned and I wanted to have Emily uh, imaged, so to speak. And um, we took her in um, and uh, they ran her uh, through the MRI and discovered uh, that she had a grapefruit size tumor in her abdomen. And um, it, 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 it was so shocking. Yeah, I, I, I was completely devastated. And uh, anyway, we um, decided to go through with a chemotherapy re regimen and uh, where we, whereby we'd have to bring her in for about a week, a month, and um, she would receive her chemotherapy uh, regimen. And um, this was in the fall of 2005, I believe. And um, we brought her in, and uh, Emily was one of the first patients, the pediatric patients, uh, that the facility has ever had. Mm. Uh, so she was taking chemo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 tell about the the mixture and what happened there. Well, uh, what happened with the mixture is a, a pharmacy technician uh, was preparing it, and um, instead of using an off-the-shelf bag of saline uh, with 0.9 percent uh, sodium chloride concentration. Uh, she decided to use, because she hadn't had any training or background in, in this, didn't know any better, didn't know that salt could kill somebody, she took uh, an empty compounding bag and uh, loaded it full of 23.4% um, uh, sodium chloride. And that, so killed, and that killed your baby? Yes, it did. And not the, and she was beating the cancer? Uh, she wasn't just beating it. She had miraculously overcome the cancer. So yeah. this, so this, this mistake with the mixture by the uh, uh, f pharmacy tech, okay, is the reason your, your two-year-old daughter is dead. Correct. Yeah. She died of uh, that, that when somebody is overdosed on uh, sodium chloride, that causes uh, cerebral edema. Or brain swelling. Was that a painful death? Uh, extremely painful. Yeah. Horrific death. What was the what did the uh, did, what was the punishment for the uh, pharmacy tech? Did they take her to court? Uh, no, uh, the pharmacy technician was not found to be liable. Uh, the person who was liable was uh, the pharmacist that was overseeing the pharmacy technician. So the pharmacy technician did absolutely got n no punishment whatsoever out of it? No, she did not. But the phar pharmacist went to jail? Uh, I believe he, he did get, uh, did get uh, sentenced to some jail time. Right, six I, I, I purposely bowed out of that spotlight. Yeah, I, I think he got six months, uh, according to what I've read here. 
Um, I'm, I'm not certain about that, Triv. Um, my feeling on that is um, they are part of the tra- whole tragedy. Um, the, the pharmacist, Eric Kropp, and the pharmacy technician, Katie Dudash, um, I've forgiven them in my heart. I know that sounds kind of weird. Yeah, it does. Uh, it sounds really weird. Really? Uh, but bottom yeah. line is they didn't go to work uh that morning intending to kill a beautiful child they were horribly negligent in what they did hmm. and it was a horrific accident it was totally avoidable and senseless now you have a foundation set up and you're trying to get a law passed you want to explain that to us uh, uh very well, quickly actually i i am very very proud to say that uh i was able to get uh a law passed uh, i was able to get um our Governor Ted Strickland, uh, back last January, to sign into effect uh, Emily's law, and anybody can research it uh, on the internet. Um, it regulates pharmacy technicians, and there's provisions for uh, you know training requirements. Uh, it's over oversight by the Ohio Pharmacy Board, so on and so forth. And it was one of the fastest passing pieces of legislation. Uh, I guess in Ohio's history, I've been told. Thank God. Now, Emily, uh, Emily Jerry Foundation dot org. W- w- what is that? Uh, y- 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 they take donations. Tell, explain what that is all yes. about. Yes, um, I I have decided to. Um, I I retired uh, from my career in medical imaging, and. Um, I've decided to uh, establish this nonprofit um, uh, foundation uh, in my daughter's memory in hopes to keep this from happening to other uh, children. And that's emilyjerryfoundation.org. Correct. Now, if, if and, people donate money to that, where does that go, uh, Chris? That money right now, um, I, I have been uh, funding everything out of my own pocket. Um, uh, but we'll, what we're doing is I, I want to get – there's technology and equipment out there uh, that would have prevented Emily's death. Really? Yes. Uh, there is uh, equipment uh, that's manufactured by a, a company that I know of out in Arizona that I worked with. Because this could happen to somebody else's kid, right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's my point. And I believe that every child is truly a miracle and deserves to be treated as such. I mentioned that earlier. And um, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, um, you know, if I can... If Emily's death uh, can can you know save just a handful of, of of children, then you know my efforts have been have, have been worthwhile. Chris, not that I, I want to uh, bring you back or anything, but I, I'm looking at a picture of your two year old uh, baby, and it's uh, she, what a beautiful little girl she was. Oh, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, well, I feel like she's my guardian. Guardian Angel trip. I don't know how I don't know how you keep the hate out of you. Well, it it, it was a, a tough thing. You're a better man than me. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I really mean that. Thank you, thank you. Well, it's it. I'm I'm doing this for other children. I mean, it, I understand. I could have uh, taken the easy way, mm-hmm. you know, uh, out of this and and just moved on with my life and forgotten about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. But then. Um, you know, her death would have been in vain. Yeah, and so I feel like everything that I do, right. um, you know, on behalf of the foundation uh, is in her memory. We're going to put the foundation on my website, uh, WTAM.com, just keyword Triv. And Chris, I got to go here, but the foundation is the Emily Jerry org. If you need more information, just go to WTAM.com, uh, click on the Triv page, and there'll be a link to the Emily Jerry Foundation. Yes, there. and please, I would encourage anybody to also uh, email me mm-hmm. uh, with their comments. I am trying to respond to everyone's uh, uh, correspondence, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, it's, it's everyone's support uh, that really is and truly is what keeps me going every day.
Uh, Chris, uh, good luck to you, and uh, thank you very much. And uh, anything I can do for you, just let me know, okay? Okay. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks, uh, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, what a story that is. Hold on one second. One, just one second here. Uh, WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Say hello. Yes. Well, I'm just the first-time caller from down here at Dover. Yeah. And I enjoyed that uh, piece you had the other week about uh, – Bernie Kosar, you felt that he was the uh, most popular athlete uh, from the, in the Cleveland era. Yeah. But uh, in my time, I feel that, of course, you didn't get to witness and listen to the games, but uh, Bob Feller, the Van Meter fireball, to me, was the greatest athlete ever out of Cleveland. All right. Well, I mean, you know, that's, that's uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't disagree with that. This traffic uh, brought to us by... Nationwide Insurance and Hillcrest Hospital. Thank you, Katie. No problem. Looking at this uh, little two-year-old here, this Emily Jerry. Oh, man. Uh, can you just imagine that? Your daughter beating cancer, and they give her the wrong uh, mixture of chemotherapy, and they put her through a death like that? Never. And then the father doesn't hate? Yeah. That's what was amazing me, that how how he reacted to it. Because I, I personally, I could not. Do you see the baby? No, I didn't get to see a picture. Come in here. Oh, you haven't seen, when you go to the web page. You, you want me to break your heart, Katie? Yeah. Come in here and look at this baby. <laughs> All right, let's go back uh, to the phone lines. What a sad story that is. That's just unbelievable. Uh, WTIM 1100, you're in the air. Hey, Trev, uh, you know, the Rock Hall does have some kind of romance going with rap music. My, my kids go to the Shaker schools, and last spring there was a... Uh, Day off school where they had a field trip where you could pay, I think, 35 bucks for the kids to attend. What on the flyer said, the roots of rock and roll, folk with Woody Guthrie and blues with Lead Belly. And uh, my kids were excited. My, you know, they knew the song, This Land is Your Land, and all that. And when I picked them up after the field trip, I said, How was it? They said, Awful. They changed it to rap. It was the history of rap and hip hop. And, uh, makes you wonder. I mean, why can't you teach everybody about those common building blocks of folk and, and, and blues that fed both hip-hop and rap, just like Howard Kramer said? You know, they're, they're, they're kowtowing to the, the audience. You know, they you, 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 you understood Howard Kramer's explanation? Oh, sure. I understood what yeah, he was yeah. trying to say. Yeah. I don't agree with it, but, you know, he's saying that, that rap and hip-hop and rock and roll all came from the same building blocks, folk blues, uh, even spoken word like the, the Well, I mean, I, 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 I think he's generalized way, 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 way too much there and simplified the whole uh, the definition of rock and roll. I mean, I really do. Uh, Bill, you're in the air in WTAM 1100. We'll play his, his explanation in just a second here. Yeah, Bill. Okay, hey, hey, Trip. Yeah. Interesting that guy's comparing uh, Bob Feller to Bernie Kosar. Bernie gave you the shirt off his back, and Bob Feller would steal it off. Hey, stop back. it! That's the truth. That guy never paid for it. Stop it, Todd! Stop it! Oh, Accusations. Yes, that you're nothing but you're you're. That's oh, a, why you that's spread those true. rotten, dirty. Yeah, where's where's true. it at? That's yeah, that's, it's rotten, you. dirty. You're a liar. No, I'm not lying. That's the truth. That Bernie uh, apologize. Uh, hell no. Yes, you <laughs> you rotten human being. Uh, say you're sorry. Bernie's the most generous guy. I know Bernie is, but Bob. there's nothing wrong with Bob. All that is is just a... Okay, all right. Is there such a word as accusation? Yes. Okay, all right. Is there such a word as accusation? Stop that. Uh, Terry, you're in the air. Yes, Trev. Yes, Terry. Um, you're wanting to know when the last time uh, Bill and Hillary slept together. It was at uh, Ronald Reagan's funeral services there in Washington because... I think it was maybe like Newsweek. They had a caption of Ronnie pushing the casket lid up, and the caption read over his head, uh, they're finally sleeping together again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I said earlier in the show, there's certain information that you know a lot of people would pay for. I would pay up to $1,000 to know the last time that Hillary and Bill slept together. All right, here's the rock. And, this has been the, the, the topic of, of today's show for some reason. I don't know how we got caught, uh, stuck on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame today, but who is this guy? This is Howard Kramer. Yes. He's one of the curators. Right, and not from Steinfeld either. It's a different Kramer, right? Correct. Yes, and he's going to explain what? Why it's okay to have rap in the Rock Hall. Why rap is considered rock and roll. Take a listen here. 
hip hop is all part of the whole continuum. It does not exist entirely on its own. It didn't form out of a vacuum. Hip hop came from a lot of the very same things that developed rock and roll. You know, we look at it under the very big umbrella and don't separate it. This hour of the Triv Show is brought to you by Petiti's Garden Center. Mike, Mike Trivisano. Serving the community while serving himself. WTAM 1100. Hey, you know, uh, last night I'm on the internet and I'm, you know, just bipping around, doing this, doing that, playing poker on one and bipping around on the other. And, you know, health care is like a big, 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 big subject everywhere you go. It's health care, health care, health care, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm reading last night on the internet. I don't know if you read this story, but Cleveland... Not Northeast Ohio, Cleveland, they said. 22% of people under the age of 65 don't have health care in Cleveland. 22%? 22%. Wow. So that's more than one in five. Right. Slightly. 17% nationally don't have health care. Right? I asked this question. How do they know? Um, they counted, maybe. I Went around door to door and asked people. How seriously? How do they know who has health care, who doesn't have health care? It's a good question. I, I mean, I love the way they come up with things today, especially nationally. Seventeen percent of Americans don't have health care. How do they know that? I probably just took a small sample of people. I mean, and- maybe I'm missing something. You could do who has insurance by going through the insurance companies. You know how long that would take. Depends. There's 300 million people in America. And that's not even the illegals. How in the hell would you find out who has health insurance and who doesn't? Maybe, maybe, maybe there is just like some simple button you push. Is there a website that goes to the list? That, I have health insurance. You don't. How, how, do you, how do they know? Where do they come up with these stats? They probably. I, I think they probably just take a small sample. And just like everything else. The well, that's so skewed, it's sickening. Well, sure. But I don't know how else you would do it then. I was reading that, and I'm going. The other thing I saw on the computer last night, if, if you know how they do that, call me, 216 I'm sure somebody out there has an explanation. I'm not sure I'll buy it, but I'm sure you have an explanation. Well, here, I'll give you a sample of how screwed up this whole health care thing it's is. It's just like, wait a minute, excuse me. Sure. It's just like unemployment. They have no idea. Once you're off of unemployment benefits, you don't you, they don't consider you unemployed, even though you're still unemployed. Well, it's like here in Ohio, it's the unemployment rate's gone down a little bit, but it's because a lot of kids are going back to college, so they don't count anymore. You know, it's it's a it's 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 everything is so skewed. I mean, they just what did you want to say? Oh, no, we we're carrying on about healthcare, and this is how screwed up it is when they're trying to fix it. Okay, Max Bacchus is trying to who Senator Max Bacchus. Oh, Bacchus. Are you allowed to say that on the air? Very carefully. He's trying to push through his own type of legislation, and now I think Pelosi's trying to do it. Orrin Hatch, who's a Republican senator out of Utah, makes this little amendment to it. And I'm not making this up. Hurry up, because Ad transition. Mike can tell us how, how, how they know. I know, and the PPMs. Add transition relief for the excise tax on high-cost insurance plans for any state with a name begins with the letter U. That would be Utah. That's who he represents. So they're putting crap like this in it. So how can you take it seriously? Mike. Mike, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. How you doing, Mike? Help me out here, Mike. Well, most of every figure that you hear nationally, when you when you've heard forty five million here and they say, you know, uh, forty five million Americans don't all of that was taken from the two thousand seven Census Bureau, which is kind of an addict it's not that not that on point because they ask people, do you have private insurance? So people say no who actually have Medicare and have Medicaid, and they count them as not having health insurance because it's not. The question is, do you have private health insurance? But that poll, that polling is even if that's the way they go, that's two years old. Right, you're right. And so you know, you know how many people could may not have had it then to have it now, and vice versa. You're absolutely right, and and most politicians are using that number because it gives them oh 45 million. That sounds so big, oh. But when you break it down, it comes actually down to about 10 million. Now the 17 percent Cleveland and the way or 22 percent. That's a lot of that done on just polling over the phone, and that's really inadequate. That is definitely not the way to go about it. Yeah, so I, any way you go about it, the the, the, the yeah. view is skewed. That's that's is, that's what I've been trying to tell Curdy and Stevie all along. You can't believe anything today, nothing. 
There's no way they know how many people have health care in this country and how many people don't. There's no way. It's just a complete guess. They have no idea how many people are in this country. Right. How about this story? You believe this story? 22% of Clevelanders don't have health insurance. But how do you know that? Yep. Yeah, if they went down to hunt the homeless, none Come of the, on. they probably surveyed them. Well, some of them have phones. So they could have called them. Yeah, that's true. The guy in Missouri, his girlfriend wanted to go get a gun. So he's, he's a safety guy, so he's, he's going to show her how safe guns are. So he has these three guns, and he puts the safety on. And he's trying to prove to her how easy it is to teach her and all this. So he has three guns, three pistols. Three pistols. And he puts the safety on all three to show her how safe they are. Yeah, he's just trying to give her a little idea. Just trying to follow the story. Go ahead. And I don't know why he does this, but he puts one up, the first one up to his head, pulls the trigger. Nothing happens. The safety's on. So see how safe. Yeah, look at this. I'll yeah. show you. Let me get the other one. Puts it up to his head. Does the same thing. No I think, problem. I think I know the ending, but go ahead. <laughs> the third one, something was wrong with the safety guy. Ended up blowing his brains out. Died the next day. Did you want to wait on hold? That so wasn't very safe. Sort of like people that bungee jump. Kind of. Yeah. I, I don't know why the guy was doing it, but I guess he proved his point. <laughs> so. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. I don't uh, know if she got the gun, though. I don't have a follow-up. I don't know if she went and got the gun the next day I don't not, think she but. did. I See, got a feeling she didn't. And I'd be considered mean by saying the world's probably a better place not having him around. <laughs> I don't think he was the sharpest knife in the drawer. Let me put it that way. Uh, Renee, you're in the air. Uh, hey, it, um, I was kind of the health care issue. Yes. Uh, I work in restaurants. I've been in the restaurant industry 20 years, had jobs at the same time where I did have insurance, but... Like the particular restaurant I'm at now, uh, is about 20 employees of them have elected to accept the insurance because the other ones are getting paid anywhere from 7:30 to 9:50 an hour and can't afford it. I mean, the insurance cost for me out of pocket is $255 a month. Then my employer picks up the rest. I think the actual policy. Like three sixty six, yes. but that would be figures that seventy five percent are uninsured. I, I don't, I don't, I don't have any. I, I mean, they they just say things today. Twenty two percent of Clevelanders don't have health insurance. How do they know that? Seventeen percent of Americans nationwide don't have health care. How do they know that? They just say things. And oh, by the way, knowing a little bit about the restaurant business, since my son owns a restaurant, you know how strippers have to pay to go to work at a strip joint. Right. Oh yeah. I think waitresses and waiters should have to pay the owner of the restaurant. To work there. Sure. It's good for the owner. <laughs> they make more money than the guy that owns the joint. They See, do. Uh, they do, but they don't. The hell they don't. Trust me. Especially if they're good waitress, yeah. all those tips. I <laughs> Forget about it. Mm -hmm. And how about a bartender? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> when the smoke clears, they make more money than the owner does. Trust me. Unless you work at some bust-out restaurant. Brenda, you're in the air. Hey, Triv. Hey, Brenda. You want to know how they're going to know? How they're going to know what? If we have health insurance? Uh, yes. Yeah, they're going to know after they put the blasted chip in all of our foreheads. They're not putting no chip in my forehead, Brenda. You'll be first in line, Triv. I'll go down swinging, Brenda. <laughs> have a good day. Nobody sticks anything in me. <laughs> Tell you that right now. That's a good rule of thumb. Yes. <laughs> Where are we going here? Tweeter, you're in the air. Hey, your son should look like some of the waitresses up there in the servers. He'd make more money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some of them can't miss making money. You got that right. I tip them just to look at them. <laughs> I go, here's 40. Just walk by the table all night long. You don't even have to serve me. Wait, I dropped my fork. Can yes. you bend over and pick it up? Pick this, pick this up for me, please. Wow, here's another 40. You guys I just are dropped pigs. A 20. I am totally a pig. You're going to get sued. How am I going to get sued? <laughs> How am I going to get sued looking at a woman's ass? You can't. You can't. I'm sure. <laughs> you get beat up. Believe me, there ain't no waitress going to sue you when a tip is involved. You got that right. That's for sure. Where the hell was I going now? Sue. Oh, I know who did the health care study, Trev. Yeah. Arbitron. That's why it's all screwed up. I mean, how <laughs> do think they? Think about it. Well, think about it. First of all, they, like, I mean, I think Curdy said it. They don't even know how many people are in America. You got that Let right. alone how many have health insurance. I can answer that. A lot. Yeah, exactly. You want to know how many people don't have health insurance? A lot. Exactly. A lot. Yes. Maybe, maybe not, though. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. How many people do you know that don't have health insurance? Me? Yes. Uh, none. Me neither. Yeah. I know very few. I don't think I... 
You know, I don't think I know any either. Let me either think here. I don't know too many people that don't have health insurance. Hey, why are you being so uh, mean to Kurt today? I'm not being mean to Kurt. He's just being dumb. Oh, okay. That yes. explains it. I mean, he's trying to tell me that defense means more than hitting. Anyway. In baseball. Ozzie Smith. Yes. And Omar, the only two shortstops in my lifetime that deserve to go on the Hall of Fame. And they couldn't hit very well. Well, who would you rather have, Ozzie Smith and Omar or Babe Ruth and Albert Pujols? I've never watched Albert Pujols, believe it or not. Yeah. And I'm too young for Babe Ruth. Well, who would you rather have, just just knowing what you know? I'd rather have Pamela Anderson, thank you. Thank you very much for who the Who would you call. rather have, Omar Vizquel or Johnny Peralta? Johnny Peralta isn't even good offensively. When he was a couple of years ago. He never was. He had that one season oh, where he had like 25 it. homers. Stop 25 home runs. I could have 25 home runs with my bedoying. Uh <laughs> Jack, you're in the air in WTAM 1100. Jack. Oh, Jack. Uh, Bob, you're in the air, Bob. Hey, Drew, I got a couple ideas on that health care uh, percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Part of it is reporting to the state, and you go into an emergency room, and you're from out of, you know, you don't have your insurance card. You mark self pay. That means you have no insurance. Another thing, too. Yeah, but that's, that's only a, that's only a, a select uh, group of people. That isn't, uh, how can they possibly poll everybody? They can't. When they come up with these, with these stupid percentages, that's exactly what they are. They're propaganda, politically motivated percentages. And it's extrapolated across the population. Hey, oh. don't ever say that word again on this airwaves here. You allowed to say extrapolated? Um, carefully. Check that out. Uh, this traffic is uh, brought to us by Katie. Brought to us by. She's trying to screen She's in. She's losing it. Nationwide insurance. That's not that hard. Here's Matt Bean. <laughs> Thank you. 90 westbound. Bef- what? 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 About 90 westbound. 90 westbound before Lorraine. It's just a broken down vehicle. Oh. No couches or a lazy not boy or yeah, nothing good. It's been a really slow week, really and good. actually, it's been a really quick week on the roads. Hold on a second here. Yes. Keep talking. It's been, it been a very slow week in the traffic center since it's been quick on the roads, if that makes any sense. The CVS Merit Man is actually on the scene of this. It's off to the left side. You're a bit slow on the approach. Just let me know when you need me to stop. Outbound East Shoreway, slow 70 seconds. Eddie, Interbelt sounds superior to 77. 70 Please enjoy the music while your party is reached. Will do. 77 South Slows, Rockside. Oh, hello. Yeah. Keep you going, know what I yes. think this song's about? What? Listen to it very carefully. Yes. Hello? There's absolutely positively nothing fell off any car or truck. Not today? Not not All today, month. not last week, not the week before. So uh, just stay tuned and I'll let you know when something falls off. Well, when it falls off, let me know because I'll go get it. You got I it, honey. a few things. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. For Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Matt Bean, WTAM 1100, total traffic. This is my other favorite answering machine phone call. Listen to this one, Bean. Absolutely. Uh, I got to I gotta get this stuff put on my uh, my phone. Listen to this ringtone here. All right. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Please enjoy the music while your party we is will. reached. Fly me to the moon. Let me play. Among the stars. Like that one? Hello? What would pretty... you pick the phone uh. up for? What? What did you pick the phone up for? Why wouldn't I? Because I wanted everybody to hear your ringtone. Oh, I'm sorry. You want me to hang up? Yes. No. Bye-bye. <laughs> trying to listen to the song. <sighs> Call it back. Well, you need me to talk to fill the PPM meters here, don't you? Yes. Start extrapolating. We'll go back to 90 eastbound. 90 westbound just before Lorraine. Have a disabled taken away the left berm. You're slowing the approach. Did all this. I did, but I'm just filling PPM time. Leave your name and number. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great day. Bye. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To leave a callback number, press 5. That went well. Thank you. Yes, that went very well. Did you ever do my voice message? No, what's yours? Dirty, curdy, we're not worthy. Dirty, curdy, we're not worthy. We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel today. There we go. Can't wait for 6 o'clock. Did you do Elk and Elk yet? I did it. I can do it again. No, don't do it again. They'll owe you. I'll have to charge them again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, go ahead. Do it. For Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Talk to the sales department. Matt Bean, WTAM 1100, total traffic. Mr. Elk, send another check. 
I hope the Browns don't wear those pants again. My God in heaven, they're embarrassing. Is there an easier way to hide a stain? Ah, uh, but those pants are just embarrassing. I mean, they really are. I see UNL Sharpton finally agree on something. What? Plexico Burris. He's complaining, saying, how can you give him two years for shooting himself? That's amazing. That's an amazing story. You know what's an amazing story? And we'll have Bill Mason on mm-hmm. uh, soon. Have we made contact with him yet? Yeah, Wednesday. Oh, we're good. When's he coming on? Wednesday. Next Wednesday? We'll have Bill Mason on, and I'll ask him how Plexico Burris could get two years for shooting himself and Dante Stallworth could get 28 days for killing a guy. Yep. Drunk and on marijuana. And I guarantee you Mason will be able to explain that. I bet you they'll say it's a firearms charge. He took it right. into a bar. Yeah, blah, 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 all blah. the nonsense. You see what right. Reverend Al's doing on Monday? What? He's going to be hosting wrestling. <laughs> really? Yes. It's perfect for him. Yes, I love it. Absolutely, positively perfect. Oh, Reverend Al. You know the other thing, too, that I was thinking about? You know, like this morning I was I was telling you guys, there's a few things I would pay for information right? besides Pamela Anderson. Mm-hmm. She's one of the few women I would pay for. But there's a few things I would pay for with information. Right, okay. and knowing when the last time Hillary and Bill Clinton slept together would be one of the things I would pay for. I would love to know that. But here's the other thing. I don't know if I'd pay for this, but you know, it's we were talking about this today. How did the whole world? Well, how did the whole sporting world in the United States of America miss on Phil Savage? Every one of us fans, myself included. Every talk show host, every analyst, every ESPN person, everybody in the NFL said Phil Savage is a genius. Everybody, yep. Well, How he must could be. everybody be wrong? How can that be? Name another profession that happens in. Where every, I mean, you know, you know, even the President of the United States of America has critics. Doctors, imagine if doc, if everybody was wrong with a doctor. Oh, this guy's going to be a great surgeon. Uh, open, a, he's going to be a great heart surgeon, and he and he and he misses and sticks the scalpel in your eye. Oops. You know, oops. Yeah, well, you made a mistake. He's not a very good surgeon. That doesn't happen with doctors. I can't. No, you're it right. It doesn't happen with any other. Prefer- How could the whole world, sporting world, be wrong on Phil Savage? What about meteorologists? But the, but that's their the occupation that, that's impossible. You can't predict weather. Then why bother? Because it you can sell it. <laughs> there you it's go. the same way we do traffic. <laughs> sort of like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We do traffic in a city that don't have traffic. Every traffic jam is the same every day. It's slow on uh, Dead Man's Curve. No kidding. Don't you deserve to try the best? The Mike Trevisano Show. WTAM 1100. All right, uh, let's go back uh, to the phone lines here. Let's go to Bruce. This isn't Bruce Drennan, is it? No, oh. Triv. How you doing? Good, you know, Bruce. We sure work. Yes. <laughs> How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. Good. You know, the only one in all of pro sports who didn't miss on Phil Savage was John Collins. <laughs> Remember him? <laughs> well, John Collins liked him. He didn't, but he couldn't get along with him. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah. They were both egotistical maniacs, and they both want to control the Cleveland Browns. And, of course, the, the power struggle hit, and uh, John Collins lost because, because Randy Lerner thought that Phil Savage would be more important to the organization. That's what happened there. Absolutely. I remember us all pulling our hair out, though, saying, oh, my God, Phil Savage. And then when everything came down and Collins got fired, everyone said, oh, thank God. Well, Bruce, what happens two years later? I don't want to say this, but I mean, because I mean, it's going to sound like I'm bragging, but I'm going to tell you the God's truth here, okay? That happened in late December. I'm on vacation. I take the last two weeks of December off every year. I'm on vacation. I get wind of it. I make some phone calls. I come back on the air over here on WTAM off of vacation. I saved Phil Savage's job. John Collins was going to win that power struggle. I saved Phil Savage's job. Thanks a lot. Way to go. Yeah, no no kidding. (laughs) I don't think it would have been any different with with Phil here, though, with John Collins here, though. You know, Mike, this this team has just been from from the start of it. You know, from the time that from the time that Ditko offered his entire draft for Ricky Williams, and we turned that down, it's just been a it's just been a morass. Yeah, it, but we, that would have we, who cared? We would have had we would have just screwed up all those draft picks anyway if we had traded our uh, with with Mike Ditka when he was with New Orleans. What a buffoon he was. I don't. I don't know. I. I really don't. Uh, eh, who knows? Herb, you're in the air on WTAM 1100. 
Herb? Nothing punched up there. Uh, we got phone issues? Yeah, we got phone issues. I'm eight there. Uh -oh. eight, 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 eight don't work. Oh, Herb, no. you may as well hang up because I can't get you on eight. Uh, Jim, you're in the air. Uh, it's Tim, Mike. Uh, Tim. That's right. Um, Mike, first, it, is it the Pop Hall of Fame or the Rock Hall of Fame? It's the uh, Rock Hall of Fame. Rock That's and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes. That's what I thought. Anyhow, um, I wanted to try to see if I could explain the way they come up with the percentage in the health care. Um, those people that don't have health care when they come into a hospital, they keep track of that. They keep track of the people that do. They take a snapshot of a certain area or time, and they'll take multiple snapshots, and then they average that all together. And the percentage is usually within plus or minus two percent. Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 really not that it's it's not even close to being accurate. It's, it's pretty. Accurate. I, I mean, I I, I, I I there's no way you could ever make me believe that it's 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 within two percent. There's just absolutely no way when you're dealing with three, over three hundred million people. Like Curdy said, they don't even know how many people are in this country, let alone how many people have health care and how many people don't have health care. And that changes so often. I mean, just think about how you, uh, your situation has changed with health care, where you've had it, you haven't, you had it, you haven't. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I would be in the percentage of this from the 2007 study of not having it. Exactly. And now I do have yeah. it. So. Hey, I'm Mike Trevisana for the Nautica Charity Poker Festival right inside the powerhouse, uh, playing uh, Tuesday through Sunday now, six days a week down there. Texas Hold'em at its finest. Limit Texas Hold'em, two limit, uh, no limit Texas Hold'em, tournament Texas Hold'em. They got it all at Nautica, and the charities are doing great. They really are. Hey, for all the information, just go to nauticacharitypoker.org, their website, and you can get all the information. But you could play anywhere from $2 to, uh, to no limit Texas Hold'em at the powerhouse down there. Great. Right inside the powerhouse. Great poker room. Nautica Charity Poker Festival opens six days a week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, w uh, yeah, that one works. WTAM 1100, you're in the air. Trev, you didn't miss on Phil Savage. Nobody missed on Phil Savage. Savage. It's attitudes and egos. Attitudes and ego get in the way. Get a little bit of success. It goes to the head. I think about the story you shared on the air. You start criticizing him on the air. His attitude gets in the way. He rips into Paul Rattle unnecessarily. Yeah. You remember that? Yep. I, and I got to say, it's attitudes and ego. It's not just Phil Savage. Bush Davis did the same thing. I mean, Phil Savage was a, just an unbelievable person. I mean, I, I you know, I, I got on on the air. So now Rattle was the spotter when he worked for me, worked with me, uh, went to the game. Uh, he's in the bathroom. Phil Savage sees him at Cleveland Brown Stadium. He starts ripping in the Rattle. Yeah, I remember. Bush Davis did the same thing. Yeah. He, had, he yeah. had a bit of success. Tim Couch carried them straight through that season, broke his leg in the Atlanta game. Mm -hmm. I had Kelly Holcomb look good on the surface, but what people are failing to realize, he and Dennis Thorcutt killed that game in Pittsburgh. They killed it. If I remember correctly, Holcomb threw three interceptions that killed him and Dennis Dorcutt. But, but, but Cornell, well, Cornell, here's, here's what I don't understand, and I was telling Stevie and Curry this this morning, okay? Phil Savage can't evaluate talent. Everybody thought he was a great evaluator of talent. There's even a quote in today's Plain Dealer how he said that blocking tight ends that aren't important to block. Okay, I mean that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard anybody say. That's 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 associated with the NFL. I mean, this guy. I don't know how. I I just don't get it. I really don't. I mean, everybody thought this guy was a genius, myself included. Here, everybody. Absolutely. Steve, you're in the air. Hello. Yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, you know, with the uh, previous caller said uh, accurate within 2%. 2% is actually pretty, you know, not too bad. When you think about, they're talking about 45, 50 million people being uh, 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 without insurance. But Steve. That's Steve, 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 because the last caller said they're within 2% doesn't make that true. Okay, but but <laughs> I mean, come, how are they gonna how are they gonna pull three hundred and ten million people and they're be within two percent? They're not going to think about. I mean, common sense tells you there is no humanly possible way they can come. They don't even know who's in this country. Well, I don't disagree with that. I mean, they're they're more they're here. Here's where common sense. Listen to this, Steve, for a second, okay? Okay. They can't come within two percent on the population. Well, how about, okay. How, how are they going to come within two percent of who has health care? 
you gotta you gotta look at how they're testing the method, right? They're they're testing it by by taking a sample of the population that uses health care. But Steve, you're not listening to me. They can't come within two percent of the population. How are they gonna come within two percent of who has health care if they don't even know who's in the country? I, I you know what? I guess I can't disagree with that. Well, I'm, that's my point. Forget the two percent nonsense that that last caller read somewhere or came up with. Sorry, somebody told. Forget about it. That's just a generic statistical model that's used. That's all it is. They don't even know who's in the country. Our borders. What do you think we're having so many problems for? You notice that the last couple of weeks I've stayed away from the politics because Obama makes me want to just you know it's just I want to. Yeah. So I basically have stayed away from it, okay? Because I surely don't want to sit here and sound like Glenn Beck all day long. I noticed that when you didn't talk about some of the things you said today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I just can't, I just got to stay away from it, okay? Even though we should have Qaddafi on because we've had a, we, we, have, we have an exclusive with Qaddafi here. We'll play before the end of the show. Um, but our borders are wide open. Wide open. That's one of the reasons we're having as many problems in this country as we do. But no politician has the guts to shut these borders down because it's a political suicide form. And they they would just it's it's they would commit suicide politically if they shut the borders down. It, it's they can't tell you how many people are in this country. That's how many people are coming in on a daily basis illegally. They're going to tell you how many people within two percent. How many people have health insurance? You're not dumb enough to believe that stuff, are you? Please get the Qaddafi stuff ready, please. Uh, Patty, you're in the air. Hi, I'm just calling because I'm so sick and tired of everyone saying don't vote for issue three because people from out of state are going to come here and get jobs when. When they get here, they'll be Ohioans, and we need anybody with a job. We have vacant housing. We need people to buy things. So if people come from out of state, that's terrific. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, I, I don't know if uh, on this show I haven't heard a whole lot of people say they're not going to vote for Issue 3. And, oh, by the way, Patty, uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, we're going to have Dan Gilbert on, who's trying to open up a casino here. That'll be terrific. So you but may, you, you may want to call in and ask him questions tomorrow. That's fine, I will. But you guys are running an ad to vote no on issue three, and it's driving me insane. Well, what do you what do you want from us? I mean, you know, we we we, we, we that's what we do for a living, Patty. I understand. We sell comer- we sell commercials. I mean, what do you do for a living? God only knows. No, what do you do seriously? I work in IT. Well, you're driving me crazy with that IT stuff. I'll fix your email so it doesn't work. How's that? Thank you, say, you. you ain't kidding. <laughs> yeah, so you just, I mean, that's what we do here. We sell commercials. What do you want from us? Hey, don't worry about issue three, though. Mm. They have the endorsement of Frank Jackson. There it's you. a slam dunk, baby. There it worked go. for Obama. It's over. I'm telling you, Frank Jackson looks exactly like Bruce. The guy, I gave, the homeless guy, I gave the fifty dollars to. Well, you, don't he? You know why that fifty dollars was gone then? Don't Frank oh, Jackson look like Bruce? It makes sense. Let me ask. Cleveland's budget's balanced every year. He's out there getting the nickels and pennies to balance yep. it. All right, we got Omar Gaddafi on our hotline right now. I'm going to ask him a couple questions, Mister Gaddafi. I got to ask you a question, okay? Why do you like Obama so much? <laughs> Could you say that again, please? All right. Well, you know, today you talk for an hour and a half at the UN meetings. Uh, why, why, why so long, Mr. Qaddafi? Really? Hey, are you still mad when Reagan tried to take that missile and shove it up your rear end? Huh? One more time. Seriously. Okay. I got it. Do you dye your hair? I just wanted to know. I just asked. Yeah. Well, it looks like it's dyed. I'm not trying to be smart. How old are you? You look a little like you you really aged. Is that a facelift? or I mean, you look like you had a facelift. What? One more time. 
on the east side of Cleveland. Where do you live? Okay. All right, Mr. Qaddafi, thank you very much. Well, I didn't get cocky with you. I asked legitimate questions. What do you got to get smart for? Oh, you kiss my ass. Yeah, right. Stick it in your ear, Qaddafi. Man. Hey, watch your language, Qaddafi. I don't care if you own a country or not. This is America, you goof. Yes. Right. You gotta pay for this crap here. This, this is traffic, Qaddafi. Yeah. Put another, put another missile in your bedroom window if you don't shut up. Shut up! Do the traffic. Hey, don't say nothing about Elk and Elk. I'll knock you in your head. Yeah, he'll be filling in for me Friday as I'll be playing Texas Hold'em Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, Steve, you're in the air on WTAM 1100. Trev. Yes. Uh, Steve. Hey, I had to figure out how you do this. Uh, percentages. You figure out the percentages. Mm -hmm. If uh, just, just from listening to your show today, I figured out that one-third of all handguns have bad safeties on them. <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. Thank Talk you, to Steve. you later. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's 33%. we got to ban those guns. Uh, Steve, you're in the air in WTAM 1100. Hello? Hello, Steve. How are you? Oh, I'm just, if I was any better, there'd be two of me. No kidding. And, and, and you know what? I think we ought to take Russo, and I think we ought to seize his assets, because he's been robbing from everybody in Cuyahoga County for as long as he's been in office. And, and when they arrest him, seize everything. Take his kids, everything, just take him. The guy is a slime. You know, I, 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 can I go one step farther? Please. I'd like to take all politicians' assets. Well, that would be performing. Um, yes, I, that, yeah. that, that, that's the because they're all both Democrats, Republicans, Independents, Vegetarians. They're all all got their hand in the cookie jar. You can have their assets. I'll take their mistresses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might be a better trade. Oh, they all they all got a whore on the side. Woo. Come on, yeah, none of those oh. whores are free though, you know that. Oh, well, I, well that's because they're not using their money. That is true. You know, that's why they overpay. See, that hurts all of us. It's good for the hookers though. See, that's why the hookers are their 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 prices inflated cuz these politicians pay more. Those sons of Now I'm starting to get yeah. mad. You know any hookers, Katie? What what is that? Do you know do you know you know any hookers? Do I know any hookers? Yeah. No, not personally. You never met one hooker? Mm -mm. No, uh uh. That's you know, a pretty good racket, you know. Strippers. I know lots of strippers. Are they hookers? Uh, they might possibly if you slide them some money. Yeah. They might. Are most hook are most strippers uh, uh uh like women? Um most strippers like to have women customers. Like most, like when I go to a strip club, they they like to come to me and they they enjoy dancing on me and being around me. Jeez, so. I must be a stripper. I'd enjoy <laughs> dancing on you too. <laughs> uh, what do you mean when you go to a strip club? Like when you go to a strip club. Do you go to strip clubs? Yeah, do it's you? a secret passion of mine.